Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Join this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's the awesome chat. We're back again. I'm Mike Sorgan, the Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm ready to have a great conversation about podcasting with a fellow podcaster making some moves here in the Pittsburgh area. Again, this is the awesome chat. Check us out at awesomecast.net. You subscribe to this and our main awesome cast show. And uh, drop us a line on the social medias, your Twitters, your Facebooks, your uh, fa- wait, what's the other one? Google, Google Plus. The people the, are we still on that? I, I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> I'm very confused. Uh, I'm just talking podcasting with people on there for the most part. Uh, so, uh, but anyways, uh, today we have Frank Mergy of the Pittsburgh Podcast Network in studio on the couch. How you doing, sir? I'm great. Thanks for having me, Mike. I love it. <laughs> awesome. Now, uh, so so we, we had. I don't know. I, I wish I had the picture up. Maybe we'll put it in post. But uh, we we had a, a meeting of the podcast minds uh, a, a, a month or so oh, ago. Yes, podcast <laughs> unity. <laughs> podcast unity that was fantastic yeah you came out to the studio it was great that was great i got to visit that studio and then you got to visit my studio uh and i know your studio is a lot cleaner um (laughs) has a little more road space better parking i'm afraid to know where you ended up parking outside uh but but hey here you are (laughs) i am here half my new vehicle is in the weeds and i wasn't sure if i got out i was gonna get poison ivy Mm -hmm, stepped mm -hmm. into a big but hey i got parking Hey, there you go. There you go. Uh, oh, I think that's the wife's spot. But anyway, oh, no. uh, oh, we'll no. find that out oh, in a little gosh. bit here. It has to be. It's the only spot out there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Fantastic. That's why the dog was barking. The wife I'm was beating my car. I'm going to send her a text while we're doing this oh, here. My gosh. Uh, but anyways, uh, don't worry about it. This happens all the time. Uh, but anyways, uh, uh, so 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 podcasting. Yeah. Um, well, tell us, you know, what is uh, Pittsburgh Podcast Network? I know, and I know it's not just a podcast. You guys actually have a, a kind of hooked into something else going on here. That's very interesting. Yeah. So, Again, thank you. Yeah, Pittsburgh Podcast Network. It was kind of just kind of fell into our laps. We were podcasting probably back in 2010, and you probably go back 10 years prior to that. One of the first podcasts. <laughs> we were. I was just podcasting. I loved podcasts. I listened to podcasts, and I worked for an entertainment company at that time called Talent Network. Uh, entertainment booking company, comedians, bands, musicians, mostly local people across the country. And then uh, they were looking to do something with their website and more digital platforms and and take it to more than just you know phone calls and booking clients. So I created a website, helped create a website for them that I, I learned about podcasting. I love podcasting so much that I said, hey, would you mind if I do a little podcast? I'll do interviews with your entertainers and your comedians and your bands. And really, just, we wrote something called Talent Network News. It was a podcast and it was just me and a a digital headset, little Plantronics headset, uh, plugged into my computer, my laptop, uh, using Skype, and I would just do interviews. And in, in 2010, and then we got Craig Wolfley, who was a former Steeler. He said, we bought a couple microphones and a little interface. We said, well, let's let's do a podcast with a real person beside just me. So we did Craig Wolfley, and then Jimmy Crenn, famously fired from DVE about two or three years ago. Um, he got into the podcasting world with a company in California, so we just started – uh, producing that podcast for Sideshow Network in California. And we decided, you know what, we got to sing some money into this thing. And we have Cren, we have Wolfly, we have a couple things that I do. Mm-hmm. Why don't we just try to call it a network and start a network? And my, my background's TV. I was a television producer in California for about 10 years. Uh, so I, I like TV platforming and that network style. So we created a network, put a couple podcasts on it. We keep bringing on new shows, you know, every few months. And, you know, the next stage is kind of making it more of an on demand network with video. Uh, and, and you do video, and we're not breaking any new ground here, but we feel you know adding video content is going to help take these shows because kind of, our studio is kind of like a man cave. You know, the brick walls and the props, <laughs> fun stuff like that, and kind of like this. But you know, it's a big man cave and kind of like a Dan Patrick if you want to give it a sports feel to it. Mm-hmm. So we're looking just to do all, all live video at this thing, maybe a live stream set up there. We have two cameras and take the whole network live. So it'll be live stream, of course, repurposed on demand for on YouTube and on video. Uh, repurpose the audio for podcasting. And also we're looking to move into a new space as well. We're kind of outgrowing that space. Uh, we probably do six or seven shows now, and we're going to bring on three more in the fall. So we're outgrowing that space. So Pittsburgh Podcast Network, but it's really, we'll be launching actually Pittsburgh On Demand Network in October. And the Podcast Network will just be one of the channels under that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more of maybe, you know, like a Grantland or like anything like that. There'll be, there'll be an audio channel, which is our podcast, our video channel which is our live streams and the on-demand content, as well as some original content. 
and as well as a blogging a blogging aspect of that as well because you don't want to give up on the blogging. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's still very strong. So we're trying to create not just podcasts but a whole on-demand network and bring in creative people. And also, you know, because my, my, my background is in TV and, you know, I love the Net- Netflix platform and Amazon Prime and even the video game, you know, X- Xbox and stuff. They're doing original content. They're finding creative people to create original content exclusive to that network. So just as our podcasts are exclusive, you know, we want to get exclusive video content and create little you know video shorts and mini series and stuff like that uh, so there's a lot of things going on as you know every week you probably have a new show new idea new business plan <laughs> and you go okay i'm gonna try it i'm gonna run with it i'm just gonna give it a shot that tends to get i, I know it gets me into a lot of trouble actually uh <laughs> oh my gosh I, I know that's why that's when when we met the first time mm. and when i discovered you i go man this guy i mean you, you're my yoda uh and i follow you yeah i mean really I went to the pod camp just so we could circle back a little bit. My first pod camp took me 10 years to get there, unfortunately, and I loved it. Well, I we've lo- been waiting for you. You've been waiting, yes, and a lot of people <laughs> have. I loved it. You, you, Missy, everybody there do a great job. Uh, and one of the, one of my buddies was there, a guy from Bar Jitsu, who you now know. Mm-hmm. And by mm-hmm. the way, we'll be uh, sponsoring the Bar Jitsu beer, tong- beer Pong Tournament in September. Nice. I, I booked him for Indie Mayhem show next next oh week. Oh my to gosh! Talk with yes, him. you did. So yes, you did. I, 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 like, like, like you got the wrestling connection. You're going on Indie Mayhem show. This is happening. That so. is so great. And, and I love rec- wrestling uh, also. And he's great. And he saw me at the podcast pod camp. He goes, "What are you doing here? Like the king of podcasting? I could do it. I am not the king of podcasting. And you can always learn something. Mm-hmm. A A to Z. You, I mean, you still might have to learn about B that day or C that day. You know mm-hmm. a little bit of everything, but it the, it changes the. the it changes weekly, daily. There's a new app, a new platform. Somebody's live, mm-hmm, not live. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, you know how it is. I, I, I was just uh, working on a proposal today, and 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 uh, you know, I, I you know, I work on you know, kind of the lower end stuff here. I've worked with other people that have kind of mid level stuff, and, and and the the client specifically wanted what's the low end, what's the high end, what's her range, right? So I, I mean, there's other resources out there. I'm like, okay, so I, I did a little poll of the favorite people that I follow that I, I know also share the techniques and what mics and everything like that. Yeah, I've never used a high PR40, you know, but it's like, no. hey, that's the best. I've heard shows that are run on it. Uh, if you want it, here it is. And also, I actually recommended this mic here, which is a Behringer C1, uh, which is like 50 bucks. And Yeah, and it sounds I, great. And, and I love the sound of it. Yes. You know? I, and I was actually I was actually talking today. I was like, I need to get more of these because like like the one you got there is just one with the mustache. You know, <laughs> we're just like ones that I acquired over whatever reason over the years that we just kind of brought down in the studio. But I, I want to kind of uniform things. So, so your mic has the same sound as this mic. And here we are talking mic tech. I guess we're talking about podcasts. We are, <laughs> and, and you talked about it, and Brogan talked about it, and uh-huh. Justin at PodCamp about, you know, we saw people asking, what mic should I get? And a lot of, and I know you and, and Brogan had said, Brogan says, I don't give a shit what mic. Or, or he what, said, I don't give a he said the thing that I wanted to say when it was brought up in my session. So I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm probably back there like, yes, uh, you know, because and that's what I want to say. Like, which mic should I use? I'm like the one that works. You know what I mean? And that's why I recommend the ones that I do, which, uh, the, the, you know, the blue snowballs and the Yetis and stuff. I'm like, it's 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 50 bucks. You plug it into your computer. You don't have to worry about all of this stuff going on. Yeah. And, it you know, it just kind of works. So let's let's just kind of roll with that. So. Um, as w- I mean, Wicked the podcast dog is going nuts right now, yes, so I apologize it, I, well, for that. He's barking you know. at my car, which is in your wife's spot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. So, um, but it's, anyways, it's kind of fun though when you when you talk about the mic. There's that one thing. It's like, why are we still asking what type of mic we're using? Haven't we progressed? It's been ten years, but I guess it's also that's that new people that are finding podcasting. They're going. This is. I'm just learning about this. What do I do? I'm on step A to Z. So right, right, right. It's kind right, of exciting right. too. Uh, just to see new people going, what do I do? How do I do it? It's- yeah, yeah. And especially then seeing successful people that aren't really using the highest end and highest end of stuff, I think is yeah. very important too. Then like, you know, you have this network, you're, you're doing something, uh, we can call this something professional, you know, yeah. under a company and, and everything like that. Yeah, there's a little you bit know? of money behind I mean, it's, yeah, yeah there, it, versus I, I don't want it to turn off people that are not, you know, particularly what you're doing or anything. Uh, like when you see Kevin Smith doing a thing, you're like, I can't compete with that. You know, even us were just like, well, we can't be Kevin Smith. You know? Yeah, it, it, it <laughs> who also has a dog barking in the background of most of his <laughs> interviews. I want to point that out. Yeah. So I am not I don't stop to yell at the dog, at least. Yeah. So but anyways, that's when you need a dog in your in your man we, cave. We do need a dog. Barks. It's, it's an office. And there's you know, people running so around. Uh, there you go. It's an interesting concept. We have the network. And again, it, it's backed by Talent Network and my T&I media company. Talent Network's really the backer of the entertainment company. 25 years, my business partner, David Settlemeyer, 
he's willing to put some money into the network. So there's some money behind it. Not a mm-hmm. lot, but some money. And, but, you know, really the network was started to help our entertainer. The entertainers at Talent Network just raise their profile. Right. They have Facebook, social media. My job was to get them a web presence. So that's what I first started doing. Get them a website, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, the standards, the basic, a blog. Mm-hmm. Teach them how to do that. Mm-hmm. Then when I brought podcasting in, okay, take some of our entertainers. Let's do a podcast now. Give them a little internet radio per se and really just try to raise their profile. So to a degree, it's a gift and a curse where it's a really a great gift that I have Talent Network involved. And a lot of our shows like Craig Wolfley and Tan Chilkin and um, they're old, Jimmy Crenn, older people, 50 to 60 years old, the host. But their names right, 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 right. and they're credible in town. The challenge is, the curse is... A lot of their audience is not so tech savvy. So, so now you you're know? you're in this position where you're yeah. educating the audience that I mean, they're they're you know they have an audience that is going to follow them. Yeah. But it's still only going to be a. I mean, I, I guess you could say the same thing when Stern went from uh, radio to this newfangled thing called satellite radio. Yeah. I mean, only so many were following them, but it was enough to make it worthwhile, right? So now you're in a position of educating these people on what this thing is. Yeah, education is the key. We are in that position. We're also in a position to now... See, those people give us credibility to maybe shop the network to different people or sponsors or get a little bit of backing. Hey, we have Craig, you know, the guy with the Steelers and Jimmy Crenn and Comedy. Oh, yeah. That makes so the conversation that, a lot easier. It does. It makes the, it opens the doors easier. We want to bring on younger shows. I mean, I love the shows you're doing, a little more hip and tech. The wrestling mayhem. Mayhem, of course, is the key word. Uh, I love what the Epicast guys are doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. I, you know, their network, they're breaking out. I can't do those shows. Right, 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 right. I have Talent Network, and I have all these corporate clients and corporate appeal. I can't do their shows. <laughs> I love what they do, yeah, but that's not yeah, what yeah. my network is. Yeah, but they're, network again, is, and you know? they're, uh, I guess we could say a younger audience, because, I mean, yeah. they're also... I, Smart. Because, I, I mean, you guys work with comedians. They work with comedians, yes. too. Different, I guess, can you say different level, different demo, demo of comedians for it the is. most part? So I, I, Yeah, Talent Network, again, it's an established 25-year-old company, so they're very selective in the comics right, they choose. Right, they, don't, right. they don't just book anybody. And that's not... Uh, our problem no. is we need to get younger. And, and, there and, are some I, great and I think for them, there. their comics are, are younger guys trying to establish themselves too. Yes, they so. will be at that next level where. Yeah. And we've taken guys on, and we we slowly add three or four new comics to the talent network roster. And there's some great guys they have that we need to get out and go see and, and start booking them. You know, but we're more of a corporate ag- talent network's a corporate agency, and we Pittsburgh Podcast Network is kind of a corporate network to the degree that we like to keep it clean. You know. Um, you know, not really foul language. Mm-hmm. So maybe a little more suit and tie network, which isn't really. It's, again, it's a curse because it's not tech. Tech is young, smart, hip. Right, right, but right. But we're trying to bring on new shows now that we're established with an older demographic and can open doors. Um, you know, we're bringing on Bob Pompiani's daughters, Chelsea and Selena. You know, they're like twenty two and twenty seven. Brings in a younger female demographic. They'll be talking fo- pop is culture. Is this the fashion, uh, the, you know. the pump and ain't easy? I'm seeing here pump on your and site. Ain't easy, yes, <laughs> it's Bob Pompiani. <laughs> <laughs> is our sports guy in town, KDKA, and his his hashtag is Pompin' Ain't Easy for Pompey Annie, of course. So the daughters <laughs> are going to take that Pompin' Ain't Easy and do their own podcast. Uh, they'll be starting in the uh, end of September. That's amazing. So we're going to try to get younger shows, younger demographic that, have, again, still have some name brand appeal to it. With the daughters, of course, they have a name brand. We have mm-hmm. a couple Penguins hockey shows. Of course, it feels sports-driven. Sports drives this town. Uh, but I like I love the tech stuff. I love, I love the nerdy stuff. Uh, comic books, video games. I like a lot of that stuff too. And we'll slowly add that, but it's a slow process because we can't just add a bunch of stuff. We don't have the manpower, number one, just to be distributing it all. And we have to watch our corporate angle of what we look like. You know what I mean? It's unfortunate we can't have a lot of grimy, scary, dirty, filthy stuff at this point, <laughs> as much as I like it. Um, so you just need like a, a, po- a Pittsburgh Podcast Network after dark channel. We, oh, believe right? it. Have we I mean... thought about it? We have thought about it. <laughs> We have thought about it, and um, and, and we talked about you too. I'd, I'd love to distribute some of your great product, and, mm-hmm. and and we talked about podcast unity. A photo we took back in the day when you came to visit. It's got to be a good un- uh, uh, community and unity. Like I support the guys at Epicast, and you you guys. I don't really see that as competition. No, I have, I have a no. different demo. We all have different demos, and I think there's business for everybody out there. Uh, and I want to help cross promote and. Uh, we had talked about doing another aspect of the podcast network because we have talent network as a entertainment arm and a talent arm. We're going to do a big speaker series and mm-hmm. get us a big sponsor by that. And we're going to have a sports speaker series, a podcast speaker series where our hosts will speak, a tech speaker series because I'm very big into tech and social media and, and web presence. And that's where we want to bring you on board to you know, and, and be a part of these speaker series and do a lot more live events. The podcast will be more live in live locations as well as, you know, live streaming them. But 
there's so much you can do. And we love podcasting, but you have to do the other things like you do. Have that Facebook, the YouTube, the Twitter, right? A dabble with Periscope, uh, Google Plus Hangouts. You have blogging. You have to still blog and put a blog on your podcast site, even though I don't do a great job of it. You, know, you need that search engine optimization and you know and stuff like that. You need to be found, and it right. all helps. I did. I did. I did find the uh, pictures finally. Though. Oh, did you? There, there it is. It is. Oh my there it is. Nice gray beard back then. Oh, I just I just cut my hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, you sent me some photos. You had this big long hair. Then you showed up. I'm going. Oh my god, where does hair go? <laughs> Yeah, there's oh, the podcast. Then there's, there's something I sent you. But <laughs> oh, there, there's a file there's, you sent. Uh, there, there's, there's, there's my treatment. Whoops. There's your treatment, um, yeah. But anyways. Uh, but no, yeah, it was great. And and, and, and again, you know, uh, Epicast, you know, just having this weekend as we're recording this, uh, uh, had podcast day, which I, or their own, like, uh, day of podcasting, I think they called it, right? Great idea, Which yeah. is like, I have two wrestling shows I need to cover. I want to come so bad. But I, uh, yeah, but I, I, will, I will confess, I saw the Periscope come up, and as I was driving, I was watching some of the Periscope. So... <laughs> <laughs> was it all? How was it? Was it a clean feed? I, I, I'm so down on Periscope. Maybe because I have a BlackBerry. <laughs> oh, there's that too. There's that too. But the feed is just so buffering, and it's just mm-hmm. always so. Mm-hmm. It's I've not had, clear. yeah, it's been. It, I've had issues with uh, some other people. Some some bigger names have been using Periscope lately, yeah. and I'm just like, really, why am I? I'm like, I'm, I'm have four bars. It's not me, you know. Yeah, that's uh, true. That's but true. That, that that that's uh, and I use it a bit. Like for me, it's a lot of I throw it. Like if I'm doing my, my self podcast here, just me in the studio or somebody else in the studio. Uh, and I'm not doing the YouTube live thing. Uh, I'll, I'll just throw it in the corner, and and I get a little bit of you know some people pop it in and stuff. I have no idea how it looks or anything like that. And and you should if if it's there, use yeah, it. Yeah. It's popular. Yeah. It's hot. It's I mean, why not use it? Yeah. Why not? And it's like, well, hey, 30 people checked in. Maybe a lot of them stuck around, but at least like my name and me talking about whatever is. Is, is is on that on that side of things, and it's definitely a tool. But but I liked what they were doing. Again, I, I've always wanted to do the live thing, yeah. uh, to some extent, you know. And and a varying success, we've done things. I mean, we we do things where we'll go to slice on Broadway for our two hundredth, and and we have a bunch of our friends come down, and yeah. it's a cool, yeah. fun vibe. Um, and I'm finally kind of confident in that mobile setup now that I'm not worried about you know it not you know it looking like crap. I think I have the right cameras and everything. Yeah. Um, but of course, I'm doing video too, and I'm really big on that. So I'm I, I'm adding this entire higher level <laughs> on top of, of, of difficulty on top of things but uh but no i'm loving that idea of live podcasting uh that does it do, that does this hold up guys did, did a thing down at the arcade theater that was tremendous yes uh so and and and, and it gets your presence out there to get right I mean, you got to right. have visibility you can have visibility online but as we're seeing even with facebook and twitter mm-hmm. it's so oversaturated you get missed and they talked about it at pod camp mm-hmm. oh you know should i tweet just once i don't want to oversaturate someone's feed but a lot of people don't even see it I people don't scroll down more than t- uh, a few feet Put it out there, man. Promote I, it. I really cranked up the Twitter dial after yes, that. You yes, you, <laughs> yes, you did. And, and I've always been because well, because I oversee. I use Hootsuite. I oversee like I don't know ten Twitter accounts, mm-hmm. ten Facebooks, mm-hmm. and like thirty websites. Mm-hmm. So all down, just going back forth, back forth, back forth, posting, and it feels like I'm really over posting because i'm posting on so many sites right yeah. and that's my issue too because I, yeah. I always feel bad for my friends that are like uh you know one of the guys that's on the shows with me is like dude you just like you tweet that thing over and over yeah. again i was like yeah because you follow all of my accounts exactly you nobody follow all of them. nobody follows all, i don't yeah. think anybody follows all of my accounts you know and yeah. it's not just that you know uh, uh i've talked about this before but like wwe i think is a perfect example of social media and yeah the guys are, are tweeting their own tweets but also every once in a while you see that promotional thing every once in a while but hey make sure you check out this show tonight and if you're following every wrestler in wwe you'll notice that <laughs> Oh yeah, you know. I mean, it, it's 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 just bad. It's it's like oh my god, my brain's gonna, gonna explode. Yeah, especially on live events. You guys do a lot of live tweeting with WWE. Any, any anything that's going on live, you're following like people and like personalities. Exactly. You're just getting oversaturated with retweets and the same stuff. Right. I get Twitter. I love Twitter, but it's a gift and a curse, man. It can sometimes just drive me crazy. But it's everybody trying to stand out, and now we're yeah. out there trying to stand out too. You're out there trying to stand out too. Yeah. You know? And I notice, I notice your tweet all across, like all the. Oh, there it is again. Oh, there it is again. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, one. You follow a like, lot of them. I know. I feel bad. Like, oh my god, I'm tweeting the same thing. <laughs> so I'm that guy because I followed all your stuff. <laughs> I know. I, I, that's what I can do too. Is when when someone follows me. I just go to all ten of my platforms or fifteen, and I go click follow, and I follow you from. I all do the of same them. thing. I, I do. So the you get like thing. ten follows right away. It's like. I just got like, t- but I think they're all Frank. <laughs> right, right, right. I think right, it's right, all right. Mergy. Right, right. I, 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 I often do that where like, oh, I just joined Twitter. I'm like, great, you're about to get ten followers. Yeah, thank they're you. all me. You're you welcome. Get me ten. You know? yeah, can you get me ten back. <laughs> 
<laughs> I wish I can get 10 for every 10. It's like, I feel like I'm cheating a little bit, but it, you know, in the long run. Um, and also I try to make sure it's like, yeah, you don't need the wrestling account. Um, um, Point Park University. Uh, oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to tag all these people. So, I mean, exactly. you, again, your, your demo kind of is across the board, it seems. So it doesn't seem like you have to worry so much about that. Or maybe it I'm is. just not seeing the rest of them. <laughs> well, it is. We, we cross promote a lot. I mean, you know, I'll oversee the Craig Wolfley t- Twitter, the Jim Cren Twitter, uh, Talent Network Twitter, my TNI Media Twitter, which I try mm-hmm. to keep for digital, Pittsburgh Podcast Twitter, uh, Seven in the Cities, an entertainment website I oversee. We, we pick seven events each weekend and promote those. So we cross promote the podcast on Seven in the City. If there's a live podcast, that's a live event, so we can promote it through Seven in the City. Right. We're crisscrossing all over the place. Um, Again, my head feels like it's going to explode every day, as I'm sure <laughs> yours does. I mean, I stare at Hootsuite all day, and it's like, oh my gosh. I run into the podcast room, produce a podcast, and then I go just tweet massively across all these platforms. Right, um, right. But right. you got to do it. You got to make your presence. We talked about that with the live. And podcast listeners are so loyal. They're just lo- they're loyal listeners. Um, if you only have 100 listens, that's 100 loyal people you can connect with. Mm-hmm. They're, they're picking up their phone or their I, 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 you know, iPad or laptop, and they're listening. They're clicking to listen to you. It's not just like a, a random overall news coverage station. They're picking your topic, you as a host. So even if you have 100 people, those are 100 people that will follow you. And you know, Go to a coffee shop and invite those 100 people to come hang out. Bring a microphone, a little karaoke box, whatever, and just do like a little live podcast. Mm-hmm. Get your name out there. Put a little table tent. Run it off at Kinko's with your with your logo and your sign. Visibility <laughs> is great. That's why we want to take our podcast network studio to a live studio. We're hoping to find it, put it in a venue, like a mm-hmm. restaurant or a, mm-hmm. or a cafe where it lives. The set will live there. So it's good visible recognition and it's free advertising. You know, hey, podcast network, what is that? What is that? What is that? And then we can come in and do the shows at various times of the day. If you want to stop in and watch, that's fine. If there's one person, great. If there's 30 people, that's great. Uh, so it's a cross between promoting them as special live events, but also having the live podcast studio to where, hey, it's just open. Come on in if you want to watch a podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's so many things you can do, Michael. <laughs> you have to have a little money behind it. Yeah. But you can be creative and just, like I said, you have 100 followers. Invite them to a coffee shop and do a little podcast for them. If, even if you don't have a microphone. After hours, it's nice and quiet. Just speak loudly. Do your podcast. They'll love you. But I think you also have an advantage. You do, and I think Epicast yeah. has this too—a very local, regional following. Yeah. I, I did a poll recently because I, I was trying to—I was trying to figure out like, can we do something with Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, in an event? And I've, I've tried a couple of events; they really kind of fell flat. I was like, oh, a couple of the guys I could make it in did, and and and, and not much more. Uh, and then I realized, like, even our hosts, you know, and, and like they're all over the place. I pulled out the poll. The you know, like five people were in Pittsburgh. Great. Here's here's a uh, San Antonio. Antonio, New York, uh, El Paso. So, I mean, it's just you know, the California, you know, it's like, yeah, we're not getting together unless we all go to WrestleMania or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, true. so, so you're kind of stuck with that, but, um, but then again, you could do something like maybe we do go to WrestleMania and say, Hey, we're going to do a meetup down here. And then if you happen to be a listener, cause they're out there, you know, yeah. uh, they're randomly coming up to me at wrestling shows and I'm just like, you would listen. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I don't know. It's me for me, my perception. I don't know if, if it's so I don't disappoint myself or what it is. Uh, I just imagine in my head, uh, that nobody listens to me. <laughs> I, that's it. I we get the same feeling. Well, we mm-hmm. see some of the listens. Sometimes they're not, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I wish iTunes gave us better analytics. But either way, yeah, you think sometimes maybe they're not going to listen. And we we did a whole week live at the Twenty Sixth Street Market and Cafe. Yeah, uh, they were lunchtime shows. Um, we were really kind of testing the concept. Let's, can we be mobile? Can we make them work? We did them around, and and the place is a friend of ours. He's just come on in, set it up. Don't worry about it. Just just do it. But I don't want you right in the heart of lunchtime because I don't want you taking up seats if you get a big crowd coming. I have right. my lunchtime people. So I was right. like, well, okay, let's just test it. So we did it like 1030 in the morning. We didn't expect anybody to show up. And some days nobody did. Two mm-hmm. or three people, mm-hmm. five or ten people. Uh, I think the Kren show was okay. The Craig Wolfley co- the podcast was better. But we didn't really care about that. We said we don't know if anybody's going to show up. And sometimes they didn't. But we did it, we tried it, we tested it, we put it out there, and we liked the feel of it. And we left the set up, it was open, you know, the set was always there, but sometimes you think no one's going to listen, and sometimes they don't show up, and sometimes they don't. I, when we book comedians like that, comedians will do, go do a show, a live show, 20 people show up. They still have to do the show. Still do it, get up there, be professional, and have fun with it, but... It's a risk, and sometimes you think they're not listening. Sometimes they're not. You're venturing in a whole whole different uh, venue there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, this 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 whole live crossover thing, and, and and I mean, and that's something that uh, uh I mean that that's a common you know 
you, you mentioned comedians. You mentioned, you know, I, I deal with wrestling shows. Sometimes yes. they don't show up for the wrestling shows, you know? <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, I've, I've been at a wrestling show where there was 25 people, you yeah. know? Yeah. They set up for 300 <laughs> or 150 or whatever it was, you know? And uh, and that, and you're really kind of putting yourself out there. And, and especially, you know, as I think the talk about, you know, a pod camp w- was – uh, uh, hey, you got out of the house. <laughs> That's, yeah. you know, uh, and I think for a lot of podcasters to try to do that, uh, you kind of have to already have, well, you kind of have to have a little bit of the audience first, right? Or yes. or at least the right venue to discover for discovery, you know? You do. Uh, your, your box, you know, uh, on the side of the street concept you talked about earlier. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, you know, even with the word podcast, like you said, I sometimes think people aren't listening. I, I sometimes think, I'm not really doing a. Are we really? We're not even podcasting anymore, right? We're right, doing, right, 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 right. I almost hate to use the word podcast, and that's why we're going to start uh, Pittsburgh on demand. Mm-hmm. But what do you think of the word podcasting? Because we're kind of are we growing out of it? Do we like the word? Because everybody wants to add video and blog. Fortunately, it. it's Kleenex right now. It's uh, Kleenex. We, it is. We, we were talking to clients, and we and, hey. and my guy was calling them. They were doing basically YouTube videos, and they were calling them a video podcast. Yeah, and it's just like, uh, uh, can we? And I'm like, I'm like, can we get away from it? And it's like, yeah, but that's how I can convey it to them. And I'm like. Okay, okay, <laughs> you know, thinking about the audience, and and that's the word, that is the buzzword that's right now, word. and unfortunately, 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 we all have to ride the serial wave and the and the Wall Street Journal article wave yeah. on it uh, mm-hmm. in order to, in order to, uh, uh, have to you know help us step up a little bit. More. Yeah, we do. It so. gives it gives us credibility, and um, you know, it's again we're stuck with it, and it's like I I really hate the word, but. Uh, I guess I guess we're stuck with it. It just bum, it bums me out. Like for me, it's a gift and a curse. People, the people, for us, we're trying to sell. Pittsburgh is an older town. I've learned it's an number one. We have older hosts. I know that, mm-hmm. but we're also trying to you know, we're trying to get sponsorships and people behind this. You're dealing with like car dealers or you know uh, big business owners. A lot of the businesses with money, big money. Yeah, if you want to make money, yeah. run by older people, older executives, CEOs. They don't know what a podcast is. Mm-hmm. Never heard the word. As wildly popular as a podcast is. Nobody's <laughs> there's people that know what it is and there's people that don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, we are stuck with it, but we do want to be stuck with the people that know what it is. It's going to be the better crowd. Pittsburgh's mm-hmm. a little slow though. That's unfortunate. It's a little slow to get people to know. It, this town is so split. Everybody's like 45 and up or 35 and under. Uh, you know, there's like a middle that we can't catch, but it's 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 growing with tech and food and fashion and pop culture. Mm-hmm. Uh, just trying, but that's not the big money right now. Mm-hmm. Those are the up and coming thinkers, the creative people, the people doing podcasts and, and creating uh, inventive things, the chefs, the tech. Mm-hmm. But they're not shelling out money for sponsorships. No, no, no. And again, you have that yeah. regional problem too. Like you know, certain the, some of the properties we're looking at, you know, can you know, hey, wrestling fans are everywhere. Yes, you know, you can go a little broader. Or, or then the people that do understand are also trying to get their app or whatever out there, and they don't have the money to spend either. So, so you're just kind of like, oh, let us know what you're doing and tell your people what we're doing, and hopefully we get three people on either side, you know, uh, or whatever the case may be, right? So, yeah, it, it's tough, and you want to get the sponsorship, but again, if you're a new podcaster starting out, again, you know, go find, just Google it. What mic do I use? Just Google it. Find a mic, a Plantronics headset, or a, like you have a $50 mic there, mic mic there, and Mm -hmm. just do it. It, It's all there. You can Google YouTube, how to, you can teach yourself. Mm -hmm. Learn, 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 Uh, learn. Podcastmethod.co is a good resource. Is that that, right? Yeah. uh, Dan Bantraman from 5 by 5 does it. Uh, there's, uh, the guy that was, uh, up here at PodCamp, at Pittsburgh School of Podcasting, he's has some stuff over there. Um, uh, there, there's a, there's a lot of people helping with, podca- we're helping with podcasting. Yes, we're trying you, to educate. Yes, you are. It, yeah, you, you have know? all these shows and we talked so, about that before we went on the air. Michael, mm-hmm. again, when I discovered you, I, I, I just started looking, I look at your profile, I go, my God, this guy, this like guy's like Yoda. I have to at least meet you. And I said, <laughs> come into the office. I want to meet you. I think I know, I know a little bit about stuff, but you, you you're way far more advanced than me. And I'm here in your studio. You got about a, a it, again, it's like the halt and catch fire studio. There is, <laughs> there is stuff down here from the seventies, eighties. I don't know the seventies. Come but, on. It just, it just feels <laughs> like it. You have about you 15 know? screens and monitors. I'm going, but well, you're pulling it off and it sounds great. It looks good, but you can do it. Just go out there and learn and teach mm-hmm, yourself. Take mm-hmm. it step by step. Cause once you learn a little bit, you get the bug, you get the itch. You know what I mean? That's the thing. 
you get the itch. If you love it, it just never leaves you. Right. And I think, I think, uh, you know, the conversation I've been having, I've, I've been having this conversation on basic ergonomics this past week. Uh, like, again, you know, don't be, be, you know, put off by, oh, I don't have a business plan for my podcast. That's okay. We didn't, I didn't have a business plan 10 years ago and now I'm trying to retrofit one to it. You know, yeah. I really, that's, that's, that's it. Um, and, and making up for bad, but bad networking decisions I did 10 years ago, you know, exactly. when we were like, what is this podcasting? Well, I'm going to ride this train and, uh, and, and, and whatever the case may be. Uh, so I, but it's different versus like, you know, again, you're, you're something that had a, a business that wanted to grow out of property this way. Uh, I'm working with some companies that have, okay, we already are talking to our clients this way. We want to talk to them this way, yeah. you know, I, 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 and I say like the podcast itself, it's hard to make that the business model, period. Exactly. Right. Got to branch so, out. Yeah. So what what else is there? You know, um, I, I just actually watched the video. Um, I'm embarrassed sometimes to say that sometimes I watch the sexy savvy social YouTube videos. Uh, oh great my. information, but you know, interesting package. Uh, <laughs> very pretty package. Uh, but uh, but you know, talking about. I hope you're not thinking you're going to make money by making YouTube videos. It's a part of the puzzle. Podcasting is part of the puzzle if you're putting in a business thing, or maybe it's just the thing where you talk and let people know who you are. And then figure out what it is that you do that people like that you can sell. That's a good part of it. I think somebody brought that up at PodCamp um, mm -hmm. that you have a voice, you have a message. You know, you're not an expert in everything. But I think you even said it maybe on one of the last awesome casts that you, you're an expert <laughs> in something. You, you know, I, you you know maybe ten different things here that you can pull off, Michael. You're a little bit of an expert in those those certain things. But you're not an expert in digital media, all of podcasting. But you know a lot of have a lot of great value. You can teach yourself that. Mm -hmm. What's your business plan? Get a piece of paper or a napkin. Just write a business plan for that week. My plan is to re – your business plan that week is research how to start a podcast. And I'm going to do it every day and learn. That's my first business plan. That's the plan I have because I don't even know what I'm doing yet. Let me learn how to do it. Can I do it? Okay, I tried it. I think I get this. I'm picking it up. I get the hang of it. Mm -hmm. Now what's my ne what's the next step in my business plan? I think take it step by step even when you're young. Start building on it. Next, I'm going to learn how to blog. I, uh, I talked somebody into you – know? I talked somebody into last week being an expert on Call of Duty. <laughs> did you really? Yes, I did. That's fantastic. And, and I think I think it's going to become a like it's almost to the point where I'm wondering if we can like ebook this thing and turn him into a guru. I, that's not the goal of it, but yeah. I'm just like I more I keep thinking about it and thinking about business plans. Uh, you know, hey, there's a uh, if we can just talk talk state of podcast. This is something I have a battle with, and I know you have a whole different business aspect to it. But I, uh, you know, what about podcasting? Like as a, how do I put this? <laughs> Have you seen these ones that were, it's a podcast, usually business focused, sometimes social media, and all there are is kind of an entry door, uh, a little more directly into, I want to say ebook services, stuff like that. You know, I, I mean, I, I, I feel weird sometimes on those, listening to those podcasts. I, I don't know if I'm turning into that kind of podcast uh, with some of the stuff I'm doing. Like, what do you think? The, that seems like the popular money making scheme these days. I think so. I think, and I think because there's not a lot of easy ways to make money podcasting. Right, right. So there, you have to find those ways. So you it, do it, become it, that person. It seems like it's applying an old model to it on top yeah. of it, right? So um, you don't I, want to beat them over the head. No, that. no, Chris no. Chris Brogan no. talks about that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and he's, you know, not to, you know, I, I, he's kind of one of those guys. I've, uh, I've been picked up a lot of his stuff uh, uh, since PodCamp. I, I got back on the Brogan train after PodCamp. Yeah, I, I, I was a follower <laughs> prior and I got the email that morning. Yeah, Sunday, yeah, yeah, yeah. he was drinking coffee in his hotel and I just picked up his old book with I think Julian Smith uh, impact equation yeah just got yeah. that from Amazon I, yesterday you know I love Brogan yeah I don't know I don't know why I kind of fell out of following him for a couple years there no no real reason yeah like well, I, 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 li I listened to the audiobook for trust agents I was reading his blog every day and then I think it's when Google Reader went down to okay. be honest I think I lost him <laughs> a lot of people talked about that in, in the lobby at podcast oh know, yeah the Google, oh, yeah. Google Reader and you're talking about Feedly and stuff. You, you like those news aggregators it keeps you on top of things and then when you don't have it, you get lost, and then, like you said, you're doing about a thousand different jobs, and yeah. things are so saturated, oversaturated, you miss things. But then again, you know? I guess we are in a point where somebody's selling something, uh, if they're on a certain level, whether it be, hey, I hope you like me helping you with these little tidbits. Here I can really dive in deep on helping with your business podcast, social media, whatever the case may be, motivation. A lot of motivational speakers out there. Holy crap. There uh, are. <laughs> and I think you But it's a good it. platform for that. It's a perfect platform for them to sell their 
self-help wares, right? It is. And a lot of people are afraid of, of all the digital platforms. And everything. Mm-hmm. They've got Meerkat. Uh, to be I mean, fair, new every day. one of my clients can be considered a self-help kind of situation. So I'm, I'm in this. But I'm also observing it, and I want to make sure... Um, it doesn't feel slimy. You know what I mean? Well, like, yeah. Like, you like, like that's that's really like I, I'm a horrible salesman because of that. Mm-hmm. But also, I hope that's going to be my advantage. You know, it is. So. Uh, sometimes it's hard to like we deal with entertainers a lot. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. Why the talent network and talent agencies have such success that a lot of comedians or bands have a hard time speaking for themselves or a right. hard time selling themselves. Right. Uh, you know, it comes off as slimy or cheesy or you know you're, you're trying to book yourself. Some people can't do it, or some people feel like they're just over pushing it, overselling. It's nice to have another person sell for you, but when you know it better than anybody, you're the only one that can sell it. I mean, you know, like like what you know, Michael, what you can teach, you're the only one that can do that. And again, mm-hmm. you can have someone speak for you, but you don't want to miss an opportunity to, to grab that client. And I, I think it's like anything; it's loyalty. And Brogan talked about if you don't want my newsletter, unsubscribe. I'll put unsubscribe right at the top, really big. I'll help you get away from what I'm trying to do because I'm not always trying to sell you. I'm trying to serve you. And and I think you know smart people will do that. You'll do that. You'll find a happy medium. But you do have a service and you do want to offer it. In one of my past lives, um, I, was, I was a telemarketer. Um, I lasted a whole four weeks as a telemarketer, by the way. I did it too. And then I spent a year and a half as in verification. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So it's still a part of it. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking of the rebuttal and everything. And I always just remember how bad that felt. You know, yeah. and, and and that's where I, I'm really on 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 top with the that idea of no no that's cool unsubscribe that's cool you know um, at least like you know hey I got 20 people on my mailing list that I'm sending out every week I there are 20 people that want to be there you yeah know? exactly so. yeah they want to be there and it's hard again when when you're the brand uh, there, there's that fine line you have to grab it's like you know I use my my T and I media is my media company I oversee all the web properties and the mm-hmm. you know podcast mm-hmm. network. And my name, Frank Mergy, is attached to it. But I'm really pitching t and Media. I'm pitching Pittsburgh Podcast Network. With Chris Brogan, it's Chris Brogan. I mean, right, he's right. the owner of it's the brand. Brogan. It's he's Kawasaki. The brand. It's Shea yeah. Bayer. It's Vaynerchuk. He is the brand. So, you know, I have a, a knowledge, but I also produce and oversee the media. You have a great knowledge, but you also produce the shows and host the shows. It's hard. It's a fine line to try to brand yourself and brand your company uh, but not oversaturate and pound them overhead with. Who and, are you? I'm confused. And also, and also, one more hat on top of those other ones. <laughs> yeah, at, <laughs> you, yeah, you're already exactly. doing all the other things. Exactly. Yeah, and we do it, and we talked about this off the air. I, I love working. I know mm-hmm. you love working. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I go home early, sometimes I, I get anxiety. I feel like I have to go back to the office. I, I try not to have any of my work stuff at home. I know you work out of your home, but I try to do it all at the office. So when I come home, I'm done. But I'll stay. To, I'll stay at the office till eight, nine, ten, eleven o'clock. I'm a lot. Um, it's not good socially. I, you know, I do love, I do love my work. I'm not married. I'm single. So it makes Thank- it hard for relationships, but thankfully I- podcasting can be a social work. What's that? Thankfully podcast can be a social work, right? It can, it can. Yeah. It's like, Hey, I'm hosting my own podcast. And so what do you do? What's a podcast? I'm going, Oh Jesus, this is not going to work. <laughs> I'm at a club. Hey, I'm Frank. I, I what's a podcast? Oh Jesus. That's a gift. In a, uh, it, it's fun. Though. I like working. And I think people that are drawn to podcasting that listen to the podcast. Yeah. Again, they're loyal, and I think they're also people that a lot of them want to do it. Uh, a lot of them want to be bloggers, want to be podcasters. They listen to it because they like it, and they, there's a fascination with it. Mm-hmm. And, and you do, and again, hire Sorgonomics, hire, hire, hire Michael Sorg to teach you, to guide you, to open up some doors. Um, you know, we have the podcast studio, and we offer services like Epicast, and you do. Hey, we'll produce your podcast. Or mm-hmm. the one hard thing is, a lot of people getting started don't have money, right? Like, right. well, what do you charge for your studio rental? It's like, I, I'm not even going to tell you what I charge because we have a fee, but it's, sometimes we waive it. Sometimes it's minuscule. So it's hard to make money <laughs> as a podcast studio right. because we can't charge enormous amounts of money. You say, hey, come on in, rent a studio for 500 bucks. I go, well, I don't have 500 bucks to do a podcast. No. Right. So it's like, you know, 50 bucks. Come in for 50 bucks for an hour and a half. We'll do your podcast. We don't make any money. I mean, we lose money that way. But, you know, eventually we would like to be more of a studio that, hey, come on in, we'll teach you how to podcast. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's like, if we had a service, come on in, you want to start your podcast, come on in for a week, pay this amount of money, maybe it's 200 bucks, come in for three days, sit in our studio, get your learn on with Michael Sorg or myself, and at the end of the week, we're going to put you in a chair, you're going to do your own podcast. Use our equipment, use it for free, 
I'll give you the tools to walk out of here and try to figure I, it out. Did, Maybe it's 200 bucks. I did not mean this to be the longest backdoor commercial for my services, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? And, like, and again, we talked about, oh, I don't want to promote you, but I'll promote you. I will promote you, Michael. And, mm-hmm. and dig around. Find your local people in your region that do this, that run the local pod camps. They're everywhere. People love giving it away. We, I give information away. You give it. You do want to make money on your services and sales and teaching, but it's the information's all out there. Just Google it and find it and how to it. And a lot of the great leaders, like you said, Brogan and Kawasaki and, and Justin Konaki, they'll give it. A lot of people will give it away too. That's right. You know, That's it's right. out there. Take it. That's right. Learn. They do. I mean, I, I, I the Konaki is another one uh, blog I follow for a good. But and there's so much you can learn. When you're diving in and, and doing the thing that like a, a Brogan or somebody offers or even I offers, it's the, no, I need to be on X, Y, and Z. You yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. um, I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm a big supporter of anybody can learn it, anybody can do it. Yeah. There but there's go. definitely a point where I want to do it, but I want to make sure it's done right. And right off the bat, especially if it's you know working for a company or something, and I think there's just that line where it's like, like, okay, we can get you up to this point. Or you want to start off over that point, you know, yeah. um, and I think that's what a lot of these are doing. And and and, and but but so much you can get so far, uh, just just uh, um, um, the Gary Vaynerchuk. I get so much out of. I love it. My His first videos. Book, Crush Crush It was the first book I bought oh. for this industry. Oh, the one that got me hooked on more than just doing a podcast. More of that celebrity branding and using all the platforms to brand yourself. I love Vaynerchuk. He's out of his mind. Mm-hmm, great, mm-hmm, great, great, great. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I crush it. It was his first I book. I definitely don't. Uh, the, the audio book is such a. Oh, you, yeah, because you got to you, get Gary. You're ready to like kick somebody in the face and do whatever the uh, hell you need to at that point. I love that you uh, love Vaynerchuk. So. That's great. He's my top two. Him and Brogan are the two guys I follow. <laughs> I, have the, I have the Vaynerchuk book in my car. I do. We'll I crush it in my car. We'll have to get Vaynerchuk at PodCamp 11. So we will. Um, <laughs> and let's do a podcast school. I'm just going to bring it out on the air. Pittsburgh Podcast Network, Sorgatron Media. Let's do a podcast. Yeah, throw it down and do, do a podcast, podcast to school? Let's do it. We'll come okay. out to the office. We'll do weekly sessions right. maybe, say, once a month or every every quarter. Uh-huh. Pod, you buy the week. We can take 10, 15 people for the week. Here's me. I'm just giving, our, <laughs> giving my idea away. Someone else can do it. And you, you do this do in it. another town if you're a podcast Exactly. Expert. Do it. I'm giving it away because I'm not scared of, oh, someone's going to take my idea. Do your idea. There, there's there's duplication, replication, mm-hmm. you know, fl- fl- what do they say? It's a, a purest form of flattery when someone does what you're doing. There's room for everybody. And we're going to start a school. We're going to start a school, Michael. Let's get on it. We'll talk off the air. I'm just giving away free information now, all of my ideas. And I think we could do it. Maybe we'll do it. Come out for a week. We'll take 10 people and we'll teach. And you can have your own podcast. Mm-hmm. Exactly. We'll give you one episode, but then you got to go do it yourself. Awesome. Frank, it's been awesome talking with you here. We got to get to the awesome yes. cast for the week, of course, here recording. It's, it is podcast night here in Pittsburgh. Uh, so I'm really <laughs> glad you could join me here. It's a hockey night in Pittsburgh. It's oh. a podcast night in Pittsburgh. That's our new I logo. It's a, man, we need a shirt. Yes, we, you do. we need a shirt. We're going to throw it. that on the on the spread shirt here uh, before I, I, I get it. Alex, if you're out there listening, oh please do that. It's a podcast so, night in Pittsburgh. It's a I love podcast it. night in Pittsburgh. Thank you for having me, Mike. <laughs> All right. Uh, check them out. It's p- PittsburghPodcastNetwork.com. TNI is a TNI Media.com. Yep. Uh, uh, TNI Plug Media. all the things. Too. Plug yeah. all the things coming up. Just type in Frank Mergy and I'll. As if, before we do, I have to say, I think it was Crystal from Libsyn. Mm-hmm. She did her presentation. She talked about own your identity. Mm-hmm. Google your name. You should be in the first 10. Uh, oh, all 10 know, should be you. You know how long it took me to get all the variations of Mike and Michael Sorg dot com dot net dot Oh org. my gosh. I, I, it took me a while. There was like that one holdout. I just like, <laughs> I had marked every year for when it was supposed to expire. I was like, they're going to let it go one of these years, right? Oh they're my. They're going to let it go. And got it. That's good. Now you Snag own all 10. It. Own your identity. Well, thanks Snag again, Michael. It. Appreciate it. All right. Check it out. Check out all this stuff. And awesomecast.net is where our stuff is and all kinds of podcasty things. Sorgatronmedia.com uh, for all the shows that we're doing of uh, uh, uber geekiness, whether it be uh, technology, whether it be wrestling, comic books, video games. We're covering it all. All the stuff we dig about and we are passionate about. Uh, so thank you to our awesome <laughs> guest, Frank. You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs> This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.